What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Have you ever been inside a hobby shop and you saw this totally rad bodacious model car and you wanted to know what was in that box before you bought it? Today I'm going to show you this amazing testers three car set. However, I'm not going to do all three cars in this video. I'm going to do one at a time for the next three videos. And if you can survive to the end of this video, I'm going to show you a really bodacious looking model car kit that you might want to see next. Quit all that jive talking, Trevor. Let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. So let's just flip all the way back to 1980 where we can get onto our nine to five job by taking a look at the 1980 Chevy Camaro from Testers. Now, since we don't have a box to actually open and pull all these parts out of, because that box is huge down there, I did take out the parts just so we can go through this quickly. So we've got the uh, yellow components, including the body, and then black components, including the undercarriage in the interior. There we've got our front nose on this part sprue. There is no chrome, but there is this sort of aluminum colored plastic that we have. There is the hood and the in, uh, rest of the black components with, of course, our really cool wheels on here, back in black once again. And then we have our clear components in this bag. So let's take a look at the instructions with Danny the dog. Here we have the instructions for our Chevrolet Camaro. And as you can see, this is a really simple snap together type kit. So it shouldn't really take too long to build. Here we have our outer wheel going into our tire and into the back wheel backing. Now this panel is very simple. Here we have step number two. And you can see that the entire front suspension is molded as one piece right here. And then this axle goes through our front wheels. Then in the back, the chassis is one big pan. And we've got our differential rear springs, rear exhaust, and the drive shafts right here. And that also goes over top here and covers this metal rod. And then our wheels go on the rod. For our interior, we've got a nice interior bucket with a shift lever here. And then we've got our front bucket seats, our steering wheel, and our dashboard. Step five is pretty gnarly and any little pup could do this. So you got the top of the engine block with the valve covers, the intake manifold, and the distributor all molded in place and the air cleaner just drops in place. And then everything else is molded inside here under the hood. There we've got our glass going up from underneath as well as our nice little roof panels in here. Panel six carries on with the body dropping onto the interior and chassis. And then you just snap on the front piece with your headlights. Panel seven shows the hood dropping into place. And here we have the little side vents that pop in and our rear view mirrors on the outside of the car. And here's the back end going together, which includes the rear clip popping into these two little holes. And then we've got our rear tail lamps, which you'll have to paint a little stoplight red. Just have a good look at a real Camaro photo. You'll see what I mean. And then we've got our rear spoiler being put on in place and then our license plates going on. And here it says cut out plate and glue on part number 23. And it looks like it is a cool Z from Iowa. Here we have the body for our 1980 Camaro. It's really looking quite amazing actually, even though it is quite simplistic. You got those nice side marker lamps right in there. This is molded in a high impact gloss yellow plastic. So for the beginner, you don't really even need to add paint on here. The window molding is a little bit light, so it might be a little difficult to put bare metal foil on here. There are some seam lines, so again, you could sand those out. But keep in mind, if you sand this, you're going to lose that high gloss impact plastic. So if that's a problem to you, um, well, you're going to have to deal with seam lines. See underneath the hood, everything is molded in place, including the engine. All you need to do is snap it in the top. So if you're looking for a slot car, this could actually make a pretty good body for that as well since everything's right up front. Now everything pops in on the front there into those slots and pins. Again, construction is very easy. Really, you don't need glue on this. It is a snap together and fills a gap in the 1980 model car lineup. 
These parts trees include the front and rear bumpers and valiances for our 1980 Camaro, as well as the T-tops, which are optional. As you can see here, they all pop in as one piece. So if you want them in, you can have them in or just leave them out. There's our side mirrors, as well as the vents off the side. So let's just move this out of the way and bring it up to the camera. Now we can see that this Camaro is a Z28 or Z28, depending on where you are. And again, looks quite amazing underneath there. Nothing really for mold marks. Well, a couple off the back. You could always sand them out. Same with the back of the mirrors on the glass surface, actually. A little bit of uh, silver paint or bare metal foil or one of those nice chrome pens would really dress that up. And there's those grills in there. Move this out of the way. You can look at the rear bumper. Again, there's the big holes there, so if you didn't want the spoiler in, you would have to fill those. I suggest uh, stretching out some of this plastic rod and jamming it in there. Use a lighter or something just to get that all stretched out. And there's our T-tops and the back. Again, those long pegs would go into the little holes in the body, but you know, a little glue would not hurt this thing. So there's our front and back clips. This parts tree shows our hood and the rear spoiler. This also has that nice scoop in there, which was quite uh, popular back in the day. Again, high mold marks and a nump part number underneath there, which would all need to be sanded out in order to perfect up this model. But again, it is a snap together quick kit, so it's all up to you on how much you really want to perfect this thing. Here we have the undercarriage of the chassis. And again, you can see how easy this thing is to put together. These big giant holes in here are for the springs, which would go across over here, a rear differential as well. There are some mold marks in here and it does say 1980 Firebird used under license. So this pan shares the uh, same mold as the Firebird kit, which we will see later on. There's the underneath of the motor and all the uh, front suspension components and rear suspension components just really cover the metal axle going from your wheels. It also keeps it in place because you would have the other half of that circle in there. Overall, very good, easy to put together. You should be able to finish one of these models on a weekend. Here we have the interior bucket. And for a bucket, this is quite nice actually. You can see the nice door panels down in here. If we just turn the camera into the light a little bit. They have a center console in place, the big holes again for clicking in those seats. Some mold marks on the floor and up in here which you could easily get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade. This one does have the automatic style pedals in here where you got the gas, the pedal and the brake. And uh, yeah, so again, very simplistic. Underneath, nice and smooth. Should go in the kit nicely and look great. Here we have the largest of the parts trees for this particular kit. One thing that is interesting is these tires almost look like monogram style tires, as if they were a copy, but they are solid plastic. So again, you know, you could always use the real rubber tires if you could find them, but the backing plate might be a little bit tricky. There's our nice dashboard, the top of the engine with again the valve covers, the intake manifold and the distributor all molded as one piece the under uh, front suspension and the rear suspension with the muffler in place as well as our sport rally steering wheel and our two front bucket seats. The axles are plastic. You might want to replace them with metal. It's all up to you. The dashboard does have some nice detailing on it. You can see the instruments in there. I know it's kind of hard to see the black for the reflection. There's the top of the engine and these are the Goodyear GT radials on the tires and if you look at the tread I mean these look very much like the monogram style wheels and tires this model kit is made in China so again there's a lot of sort of copying going on but overall I think this should look good once you get it all together now here we have what would be considered the chrome parts tree the only downside is it was molded in this gray plastic however it does still look quite nice this could pass off as aluminum very uh, nicely detailed wheels in here for the simplicity of the kit. There you have your shift lever with the boot and our Camaro air cleaner. So overall, not bad. Some mold marks again off the back, but for just how simple this kit is, really, this is the best we can do. Now, if a problem comes along with this model, you can whip it. Whip it good. 
but here we have our glass. What was nice about this is it was in a clear plastic bag, so it keeps it from scratches. There's our tail lights, which you will have to paint with some amber and some stoplight red. And I do believe all the little grooves in here are actually painted black. So that would divide this up quite a bit. There should be one light in here that's clear for backup light as well. Not totally familiar with the Camaro style rear tail lamps, but overall, this is a nice clean piece of glass. I hope you found this video most triumphant in choosing your next model car. Now, as promised, here's a really cool model car video that you should check out next. And if you want to see what model cars I have for sale, check out this cool link over here. It'll take you right to our website. And don't forget to subscribe right down here. Well, I hope you can join us next time as we take a look at more of these amazing kits from the 1980s. And until next time, everyone, be excellent to each other.